This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the second lecture on control accounts. And remember, control accounts is just the name we give to total receivables we call sales letter control account or receivables letter control account. Total payables account in the nominal ledger we call payables ledger control account or purchase ledger control account. Uh, now the first type of question you can be asked is effectively simply writing up one of the T accounts. Uh, to show to I mean look at example one uh, in the notes. Uh, Simitar proves the accuracy of its receivables payables ledgers by preparing monthly control accounts. At 1st of September 2007, the following balances existed in the company's accounting records and the control accounts agreed. So there's a balance at the beginning of September on receivables ledger control account, total receivables of 186,220. Uh, there's a balance on the payables ledger control account, so the total payables account. Uh, as you'd expect, a credit balance of 89,290. We're then given a list uh, of all the transactions that took place during September. And what we're asked to do is to prepare the receivables, the payables, control accounts for the month of September. Uh, now, next time, you're not going to be asked to write up both accounts, it could be one or the other, uh, but it, it's good practice here, Let, let's have a go. So, we've got the receivables ledger control account. Which remember is total receivables. And the balance at the start of uh, September, a debit balance, clearly an asset. 186,220. The total receivables. At the same time, I'll write up the payables ledger control. Total payables account. And again, we start the month, beginning of September, there's a credit balance of 89,290. Now let's go through these, this list of transactions and our job is to decide which account does it go in and is it a debit or a credit. Let's run down. First of all, credit sales. Uh, another way of saying sales on credit and of course sales on credit, what do we do? We debit receivables, 101, to 60. We credit sales. Now we're not asked for the other T accounts, so I'm not going to do them. I'm just going to do total receivables, total payables. Uh, watch for tricks in these. Um, you know, the question gives you a list. It could tell you credit sales, 101,000, cash sales, 50,000. Well, of course, Cash sales would be irrelevant to what we're doing. Cash sales don't affect uh, receivables. If you make sales for cash, you debit cash, you credit sales. It will be there just as a trick. Anyway, next one, credit purchases. Again, it means purchases on credit. What's the entry for purchases on credit? Debit purchases, credit payables. Uh, 68,420. Sales returns. Well, we dealt with this uh, in the last lecture. If a customer, if we sell goods, we debit receivables. If a customer returns goods, we credit receivables. Returns, 9,160. And purchase returns, again, when we buy goods, we credit payables. If we return any goods, purchase returns. If we return any, we'll debit payables. 
four two and two. Cash received from customers. It must be cash received from credit customers. There's no other information. Well, what's the double entry of customers' payers? Debit cash, credit receivables. 91.270. It's easy. Just revision of uh, what we've done in lots of earlier chapters. Cash paid to suppliers. Cash paid to suppliers. Credit cash. Debit payables, 71.840. Cash discounts allowed. Now be careful of the terminology here. It's a cash discount. If you allow a discount, you're giving a discount to customers. And so a discount allowed uh, reduces what customers owe us. Credit receivables, debit discount allowed. It's an expense, as I said in the previous lecture. You're debiting, it's an expense, statement of profit or loss. Uh, discounts received, well, of course, just as we give discounts to customers, maybe our suppliers give us discounts if we pay early. And if we if if a supplier gives us a discount, we're receiving a discount. It's a discount received. And of course, if we get a discount from a supplier, it means we owe less. And so debit payables. You'd have an account discounts received. You'd credit it because it's effectively income. And it appear on the statement of profit and loss as a bit of extra income. Irrecoverable debts written off. Well, again, a little bit of revision uh, from some things we did uh, 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 loads of time back. Um, if we write off any irrecoverable debts, what do we do always? We credit receivables, credit receivables for 60. Debit irrecoverable debts expense. Although I do appreciate here, although I'm saying where the uh, debits and credits would go, in an exam question it's completely irrelevant. Uh, all we're asked is for the final balances. And so it's just a question of are we debiting, are we crediting? Uh, I'm not really worried where the other entry would be. Again, watch for tricks here. If they gave you a question like this, you know, with loads of transactions, they might say irrecoverable debts written off for 60, uh, doubtful debts 500. Well, that'd be there to trick you because remember, look back if you need to, doubtful debts, we don't change receivables at all. All right, we'd have an allowance for receivables, but that's not asked about here. But they might put doubtful debts in just to make sure, check that you know that it doesn't affect receivables. Let me jump one because there's one more thing I've got to explain, uh, refunds. But if I jump over that one, there's a contra settlement at 480. Well, again, I explained what that was in the um, previous lecture. Always we're removing a receivable we're removing a payable, we're cancelling them. So always, contra, you will credit receivables here for 80. You'll debit payables. Finally, though, a refund to customers. Now listen to me carefully here, because lots of people get very confused and misunderstand the word. The word refund simply means a repayment of cash. And why might you repay cash to a customer? They should be paying themselves cash. 
Well, there are lots of reasons, well, not lots, but there's several reasons it could happen. For instance, maybe you have a customer who owes us 500. Uh, the customer pays us, but accidentally pays us too much. Maybe they pay us 600 by mistake. Debit cash, credit, the receivable, 600. Now, of course, we are honest and we tell the customer, you paid us too much. We will repay you that hundred, the overpayment. And so when we repay a uh, hundred, because they paid too much, what's the entry going to be? Credit cash, debit, a receivable. It's a refund. We've paid cash back to the customer credit cash, debit, receivable. Here, it was because they'd paid us too much. Let me give you one more reason it could have happened. Um, suppose, um, again, you had a customer owing us 500. He pays us the 500. Debit cash, Credit customer 500, he doesn't owe us anything. But then he discovers the goods are faulty, there's something wrong with them, and he returns them. When he returns goods, we dealt with this in the last lecture, debit returns, credit, the customer. Now, if he hadn't already paid us, there'd be no problem. If he hadn't paid us, he was owing 500 returns, and he now owes us nothing. But here, he's returned, but he'd already paid. And so surely, we should repay him that 500. And what's the entry going to be when I pay him back the 500? Credit cash, debit receivables. So I'm giving you two different reasons why it can happen, but I don't care why it happens. If ever you repay cash to a customer, you credit cash, you debit receivables. So let's do that and finish it. What is this? Refund 300. Refund repaying cash, so credit cash, debit receivables with 300. So there we are, we've done all the entries, so uh, let's work out the final balance on each. And then I can make one last point to, to watch for in this sort of question. Uh, receivables, the debit side, 186220 plus 101260 plus 300. I think it's 287780. Missing figure minus 9160, 91270, 1413, 460, 480. I think the balance, I hope I'm right, is 184980. I'm not going to waste time checking it, there's no sort of back anywhere you can check, but I think that's right. Uh, what about uh, payables? Uh, the credit side is the big side, 89,290 plus 68,420. 157,710. The balance, therefore, minus 4,280 minus 71,840, 880. 480. I get 80230. Fine. All right, now before I leave this example, uh, two things. Firstly, as I said, you're not going to be asked to write up both T accounts in one question, but they could give you a question like this and just want receivables or just want payables. Secondly, though, 
what's a quite nice way of testing these. Here, I gave you all the transactions and we were asked what the final balance was. What they might do is tell you what the final balance is, give you all the transactions except one of them. So for instance, they might give you this question, give you all the transactions for receivables except for sales on credit, tell you what the final balance is, and so surely you can work backwards. We know sales on credit goes there, but we don't know the figure. Uh, we know the balance brought forward, the refund, the returns, all of these figures will be given, including the final balance. And so we could write up the T account and sales, surely, sales would be the missing figure. And what is the missing figure? You see the credit side adds up to 287.780 minus the figures we know, 186.220.300. The missing figure, 101.260, which of course we know here is the correct answer. So it's not actually any harder, but again, it's when you're hurrying. There's more scope to make silly mistakes when it's a missing figure like that, um, as against when it was in the original question here, just finding the final balance. OK, that's one type of question. I'll stop this lecture here, but in the next, the final lecture on this chapter, I'll show you the other type of question that can be asked.